Good day. So today I'll be discussing lecture 4.1 of Mathematics 21, Antiderivatives and Anti-Differentiation. Okay, so this is the outline of our lecture for today. I'll be dividing this lecture into two videos. Video 1 will include topics 1 and 2, and video 2 or the second video will discuss integration by substitution. Okay, so let's go to the first topic. We use topics on Math 21. We have been determining the derivatives of functions. So what if this time, you're given the derivative? What is the function from which it came from? So suppose f prime of x is equal to 2x, what is f of x? So the answer is f of x can be equal to x squared because the derivative of x squared is 2x. So is this the only function satisfying uh, the condition that f prime of x is 2x? So we'll see later that no, this is not the only function because you can add any constant to this and you'll, get, you'll still get 2x as derivative. So we define an antiderivative. A function f is an antiderivative of the function f on an interval i if and only if f prime of x is equal to f of x for every value of x in that interval. So let's look at some examples. The antiderivative of f of x equals 12x squared plus 2x is... So let's see, is it 4x cubed plus x squared? The derivative of 4x cubed is 12x squared. So we get the first term. The derivative of x squared is 2x. So indeed, this is an antiderivative of this function. How about if we have g of x equals cosine x? What is its antiderivative? The antiderivative, let's call it capital G of x, is sine x because the derivative of sine x is positive cosine x. Let's look for another antiderivative of small f of x. Let's call it f1 of x. Another antiderivative of 12x squared plus 2x is, say, 4x cubed plus x squared plus 1. Okay, indeed, the derivative of f1 of x is still 12x squared plus 2x. How about if uh, we want to get another antiderivative of cosine x? Let's call it g1 of x. We can choose sine x plus any constant, say pi. Okay, the derivative of g1 of x is cosine x plus 0 or cosine x. Okay, so from these examples, we see that if an antiderivative of a function exists, then it is not unique. So if f is a particular antiderivative of f on an interval i, then every antiderivative of f on the interval i is given by f of x plus c, where c is any or where c is an arbitrary constant. Okay, so one, when you get the antiderivative, dapat laging may c. Okay, it's always f of x plus c. C can be 0 or any constant. Okay, another remark, if f1 and f2 are antiderivatives of f, then f2 of x equals f1, f1 of x plus some constant. Okay, so let's look at some notations and terms that we will be using. So the process of finding the antiderivative, of course, is called the process of antidifferentiation. And this is the integral sign. It denotes the operation of antidifferentiation. So please practice writing the integral sign. If you notice, it looks like an elongated S. As we shall see later, bakit S? Kasi yung integral or antidifferentiation represents a sum. Okay, we'll see that later. But for the meantime, please practice uh, on how to write the integral sign. So if we say that capital F is an antiderivative of the function F, we write antiderivative of f of x dx equals capital F of x plus c. Okay, so laging may kasamang dx if this is a function of x, yung antiderivative natin. Okay, f of x here is called the integrand. 
And capital F of x plus C is called the general antiderivative of F. Now, each antiderivative of F is called a particular antiderivative of F. If you replace C by a constant, you call that an, an a particular antiderivative. Okay, so just to practice the notations, this is what we have solved earlier. So the antiderivative of 12x squared plus 2x dx, again, magkakalimutan yung dx, the antiderivative is 4x cubed plus x squared plus c. Okay? So wag din kakalimutan yung c. The antiderivative of cosine x dx is sine x plus c. Okay? Again, derivative ng sine is cosine x and derivative of a constant is 0. Antiderivative of dx. This is antiderivative of 1 times dx. So the antiderivative is x plus c. Okay, check natin. Ang derivative ng x ay 1. Derivative of c is 0. Antiderivative of 3x squared dx is x cubed plus c. Ma, ang derivative ng x cubed ay 3x squared. Okay, we have it here. Derivative of c is 0. Next, x, antiderivative of x squared dx. If you compare it with number 4, okay, pareho lang sila except for uh, kulang ng constant na 3 sa number 5. So, let's try. Sorry. The antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3 plus c. Let's check the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared divided by 3. So, magka-cancel out yung 3, you get x squared. Derivative of c is 0. Okay? So, yung ginawa natin kanina, we tried to guess the antiderivatives. But there are actually theorems on antidifferentiation that we can use para makuha natin agad yung antiderivative ng isang function. So, ito, first, antiderivative of 0 dx is equal to a constant. Antiderivative of dx, as we have seen in the example, is x plus c. Now, if a is a non-zero constant, then the antiderivative of a times f of x, ang sinasabi nito, yung a na constant, but basta non-zero siya, pwede nyo ilabas. Okay? So, you get a times the antiderivative of f of x dx. Theorem number 4. So, if f and g are defined on the same interval, then the antiderivative of the sum or difference of f and g is equal to, yun. So, pwede nyo, parang, parang i-distribute yung integral over addition or subtraction. Okay? So, this is equal to antiderivative of f of x dx, basta may dx pa rin dyan, ha? Plus or minus antiderivative of g of x dx. And last, uh, ito yung pinaka-useful sa mga theorems. So, if n is a real number, which is not equal to negative 1, then the, the antiderivative of x to the n dx is equal to x raised to n plus 1. So, you add 1 in the exponent divided by n plus 1. And of course, don't forget the integration constant plus c. Okay? Again, antiderivative of x to the n dx is x to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 plus c. So for now, n should not be equal to negative 1. Diba? Kasi if n is negative 1, the denominator will be equal to 0. Later on, we'll see an in in antiderivative if we have x raised to negative 1. Okay? So now, let's go uh, or solve these examples to practice or to use the theorems that we have just discussed. Number one, we want to get the integral or we want to get the antiderivative of x raised to 5 dx. Okay, so gamitin lang natin yung last theorem. That's theorem 5 in here. So the antiderivative is equal to x raised to 5 plus 1 is 6 divided by 6 plus c. Okay? Next, antiderivative of 2 dx. 
Kung meron tayong constant, pwede nyo ilabas. So, this is equal to 2 antiderivative of dx. And antiderivative of dx is x plus, say, c1. Okay? Then, we distribute 2. You get 2x plus 2c1. But, 2c1 here is, again, a constant. So, we can just call it c. Constant pa rin. So, you have 2x plus c. Next. Number 3, get the antiderivative of 3 over x to the 5th dx. Sige, yung over x to the 5th, iba na lang yan, 3x raised to negative 5, sorry, negative 5 dx. So again, we use the 5th theorem. And then we can also take out the constant 3. So 3 times the antiderivative of x to the negative 5 dx so, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So, you have x raised to negative 4 over negative 4 plus c1. Okay, again, if you distribute 3, you get negative 3 over 4. Yung x to the negative 4, ilagay na natin sa denominator, plus 3c1. But again, 3c1 is just a constant. So, we can write this as negative 3, 4x raised to 4 plus c. Okay? So, kita pa ba? Okay? So, what do you notice? Kung merong constant, pwede yung, uh, sige, katulad nito, okay? You can get the integral of dx or the antiderivative of dx which is x. So, you have 2x and then sa dulo nyo na idagdag yung constant. Okay? So, ganun din dito. Antiderivative of x raised to negative 5 is x to the negative 4 over negative 4. And then, dito nyo na idagdag yung constant. Okay? So, fourth example, antiderivative of x cubed plus 1 over square root of x dx. Okay? Sum to. Okay, so pwede natin kunin yung antiderivative ng bawat term. We can write this as the antiderivative of x cubed dx. Okay, again, huwag kalimutan yung dx. Plus antiderivative, isulat na natin na uh, in terms of rational exponents para madaling mag-add ng 1. Okay, 1 over square root of x is equal to x raised to, since nasa denominator, negative yung exponent, square root is 1 half. So, you have x to the negative 1 half dx. Okay? Yan. Then, apply the last theorem. Antiderivative of x cubed is x to the 4 over 4 plus c. Pero okay lang na mamaya na natin i-add yung c. Or, sige, kung gusto nyo makita, pwede mag-add kayo ng c1 dyan. Plus, antiderivative of x to the negative 1 half is x. Negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half. Okay, divided by 1 half plus c2. Okay, and this is equal to x to the 4th over 4 plus 2 x to the 1 half is square root of x. c1 plus c2, you can combine them into one constant. Okay. Here, to the next example. So, we want to get the antiderivative of t times the quantity 2t minus t square root of t dt. Okay. Common mistake. Siguro, kung nagmamadali kayo, gusto nyong mag-distribute. Remember, ito, wala tayong theorem. At wala talagang theorem na pwede nyong i-distribute yung antiderivative over a product. So, this is not equal to, huwag nyong sasabihin ganito ha, t dt times antiderivative of the quantity 2t minus 3 square root of t dt. Malito. Okay? Malito. They are not equal. You cannot distribute an antiderivative over a product. So, ang gagawin muna natin, uh, distribute nyo na muna to sa loob. Okay? So, to distribute t, you get 2t square 
minus 3. T times square root of T is T raised to 3 halves. DT. Okay? So, ngayon, difference to. Therefore, we can get the antiderivative of each of the terms. We can write this as 2 T square DT. Okay? Pag kaya nyo na, pwedeng i-direction nyo na agad. But, since example pa lang to sa bagong topic, I'll write out the details. Pero ito, okay lang ba? Ilalabas yung 2. Then, antiderivative of t square is t cubed over 3. Yung c, mamaya na lang. Minus, ilabas yung constant na 3. t raised to 3 halves, so add 1 to 3 halves. 3 halves plus 1 is 5 over 2. So, all over 5 times 2. Okay? So, divided by 5 halves or times 2 fifths. Tapos, dito na lang yung c. Okay, let's rewrite this a bit. You get 2 thirds t cubed minus 6 over 5 t raised to 5 halves plus c. Okay. Next, we want to get the integral of 3x squared plus 1 all over x squared. Again, may quotient tayo. Marami yung nagdi-divide pero hindi pwede. So, you cannot get the integral of 3x squared plus 1 dx divided by the integral of x squared dx. So, wala, hindi pwede to. Okay, so anong gagawin natin? So, we can divide each of the terms in the numerator by x squared. Okay, so 3x squared divided by x squared is 3 plus 1 over x squared is x raised to negative 2 dx. Ayan, sum na lang. Therefore, we can apply the theorem. Ayan, antiderivative of 3 is 3x plus antiderivative of x raised to negative 2 is x raised to negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus C. Okay? Or we can write this as 3x minus 1 over x plus C. So now we look at the antiderivatives of trigonometric functions. So we have here 8 formulas. Pero technically, hindi, wala kayong bagong kakabisaduhin. Kasi paano nakuha tong mga antiderivatives na to? Binaliktad lang natin. Alam niyo yung derivative ng cosine ay negative sine. Ang derivative ng sine ay cosine. So, ganun lang. Uh, we're given the derivative. Malalahan niyo kung saan galing. Kung anong function yung magbibigay ng ganong derivative. Okay? Sige. So, be familiar. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. Antiderivative of secant square is tangent. Kasi derivative ng tangent ay secant square. Antiderivative ng cosecant squared x dx ay negative cotangent x plus c. Antiderivative ng secant tangent ay secant. Antiderivative ng cosecant x cotangent x ay negative cosecant x. Take note, dito negative pag sa c nagsisimula ang antiderivative. Okay? Okay, let's try. So, pwede nyo gamitin yung ibang theorems na na-discuss natin kanina. Ito, we have a sum. Therefore, you can get the antiderivative of each of the terms. Okay, hindi ko napapakita yung dinistribute, ha? Uh, antiderivative of sine is negative cosine x plus antiderivative of cosine is sine x and then don't forget plus c. Okay, to check kung tama yung antiderivative nyo, kunin nyo na lang ulit yung, yung derivative ng sagot. Derivative ng negative cosine ay negative of negative sine, so magiging positive sine. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of the constant is zero, so tama. Number two, again, this is just a difference, so pwede natin kunin yung antiderivative ng bawat term. Tapos, pag may constant, ilalabas lang. So, 3 
Antiderivative of secant x tangent x. Ito. Diba? Antiderivative of secant x tangent x is secant x. Minus 2. Antiderivative of cosecant squared x is negative cotangent x. So, negative-negative magiging positive 2 cotangent x plus c. So, again, kunin natin yung derivative nito. Derivative of 3 secant x is 3 secant x tangent x. Derivative of 2 cotangent x is 2 times negative cosecant squared x. Derivative of the constant is 0. Okay? For number 3, we have cosine x, antiderivative of cosine x divided by sine squared x. Okay? Again, hindi nyo pwedeng kunin yung antiderivative ng numerator at denominator. Tapos, i-divide sila. Hindi pwede yun. So, what will we do? Let's try to use some identities. Naalala pa yung ibang trig identities natin. Ito kasi yung sine squared, di ba pwede nyo yung isulat na sine x times sine x. Paghiwalayin ko na lang para mas obvious. Yan. And then what is cosine x over sine x? It's just cotangent x. 1 over sine x is cosecant x. Okay? If you notice, ito na siya. Remember, multiplication is commutative. Kaya equal lang yung cosecant x, cotangent x, sa cotangent x, cosecant x. So, the integral or the antiderivative is negative cosecant x plus c. Okay? Next, you want to get the antiderivative of tangent square dx. May nakikita ba kayo dito na tangent square? Wala, di ba? So... Hindi naman natin pwedeng isulat na tangent times tangent. Wala rin antiderivative ng tangent for now. Okay, so anong gagawin natin? We recall some more identities. Ano yung alam nyo na may tangent square? Ito, medyo malapit. Na, an, at saka secant square na identity. Okay, yung isa sa Pythagorean identity natin, ang sabi ay 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. Tama? So, etong tangent squared x, if you transpose 1, should be equal to secant squared x minus 1 dx. Okay? So, now, you can get the antiderivative of each of the terms. Antiderivative of secant squared x dx is tangent x. Okay, so you have tangent x minus antiderivative of 1 dx. So minus antiderivative of 1 is x. And syempre, wag kakalimutan yung plus c. Okay? Next, we go to particular antiderivatives. Alala, so sabi natin, f of x plus c is called the general antiderivative of f. And then, each antiderivative of f is called a particular antiderivative of f. Okay? Ano yung particular antiderivative? We give a specific value for the constant. And how do we find that constant? We use what we call an initial or a boundary condition. So, let's look at this example. So, suppose f prime of x is 2x and f of 2 is 5. What is f of x? So, for the general antiderivative of 2x, okay, ano nga ulit yan? This is equal to x squared plus a constant. Okay? Kasi derivative ng x squared ay 2x, derivative of the constant is 0. So, our next problem is to find the value of this constant. Doon na ngayon gagamitin itong condition na to. This is called your boundary condition or initial condition. So, f of 2 is 5. Ito yung f of x natin. So, when you say f of 2, let, uh, let's just replace x by 2. So, you have 2 square plus c is equal to 5. Okay, solving for c. So, 5 minus 4, c is equal to 1. 
Therefore, our particular antiderivative, f of x is x squared plus the constant, which is 1. Okay? Next, we're given the same integrand. f prime of x is still equal to 2x, but we're given a different boundary condition. So we expect the constant to be maybe different from the constant we obtained earlier. Okay, so f of x, first get the general antiderivative. f of x is equal to the integral of 2x dx. Again, this is equal to x squared plus c. Next, we use the boundary condition or the initial condition that f of 2 equals negative 1. f of 2, papalitan natin yung x ng 2. So 2 squared plus c is equal to negative 1. So solving for c, we have negative 1 minus 4, c is negative 5. Therefore, f of x is equal to x squared minus 5. Okay? Ayan, sige. So, let's go to this example. Last na yata to for this part. Okay. So, sabi dito, the slope of the tangent line at any point x, y on a curve is given by 3 square root of x. You're asked to find the equation of a curve if the point 9, 4 is on the curve. Okay? So, ano yung mga given sa atin? So, ano tong 3 square root of x? 3 square root of x is the slope of the tangent line at any point x, y. And then, you're also given a point on the curve. Okay? Sige. Isa-isahin natin. Yung slope ng tangent line, naalala nyo? So, the slope of the tangent line on the curve is equal to the derivative f prime of x. Okay? So, suppose f of the curve has equation y equals f of x. So, the slope of the tangent line is f prime of x. That's 3 square root of x. So, to get f of x, f of x is the antiderivative of 3 square root of x dx. Okay? You have 3 x raised to 1 half. So, antiderivative of x to the 1 half, 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. So, 1 half plus 1, 3 halves, all over 3 halves plus c. So, you cancel natin to. f of x is equal to 2x raised to 3 halves plus c. Okay? So, this is the parang general antiderivative. Okay. So, next we have to solve for c. Itong 9, 4. Okay? Ito yung parang initial condition natin. Ano yung sinasabi niya? If your x is 9, your x is 9, 4, if uh, this point is on the curve, 4 is equal to f of x. Okay? Or in other words, f of 9 is equal to 4. Okay? Yan. So using this, nakuha na natin yung f of x dito. So f of 9, you have 2, uh, 9 raised to 3 halves. So, that means square root of 9 cubed okay, plus c is equal to 4. Tama? Yung 9 to the 3 halves is square root of 9 or 9 raised to 1 half raised to 3. Okay, square root of 9 is 3. 3 cubed is 27. So, you have 54 plus c equals 4 or c equals negative 50. Therefore, the equation of the curve, f of x is 2x raised to 3 halves minus 50. Okay? Clear? Yeah. So, pause muna tayo if you want to try this out. Uh, so, try to find the following antiderivatives. By the way, this is from page 207 of your module. Try part A, numbers 1, 3, and 5. Practice lang yan ng antiderivative. You can spend 5 minutes for each problem. 
And then for C, this is an application of the particular antiderivative. You can allot 10 minutes for this. So try nyo muna to, then uh, watch the discussion video of Dr. De La Cruz. And then on the next video, we'll be discussing finding the antiderivative by substitution.